I wanted to talk about Antonio Giovinazzi and okay. how actually since the summer break, he's almost turned a leaf, hasn't he? He's turned a corner. Um, I feel like he knows his seat is up for grabs. It's one of the very few seats on the grid which hasn't been confirmed for the 2022 season. And fair play to him, coming out of the summer break, he's qualified in the top 10 twice out of mm. three races, which is actually a huge difference compared to what he was doing beforehand. So we've you know praised him before. We mentioned it during the race that Antonio's done quite well again to put it into Q3. Alfa Romeo seem very happy about it because there's all they're tweeting about at the moment. But unfortunately, it all goes down the pan. Let me talk you through what happened. Well, you obviously know, but for those audio listeners who haven't watched the race, so Antonio goes deep into turn four, which is the second chicane on the track. He realizes he's not going to make the corner. So he goes wide and cuts the corner in instead. A very important decision for those who, you know, aren't going to make corners later on in the race and maybe should just go off and cut the corner instead. But he chose to cut the corner and uh, rejoin the track. Whilst rejoining the track, he clearly didn't realise that on the left-hand side, Carlos, Carlos Sainz in the Ferrari is there. And uh, the pair touch. Carlos seems to get off absolutely fine, but Antonio comes off far worse and goes into the barrier, losing his front wing. And I was just about to say, it's, it's a real shame for Antonio. And I know it's his fault. I really I appreciate it's his fault. It was an unsafe release. Uh, not unsafe release. It was an unsafe joining of the track, which I think is a dangerous re-entry. That's what it's classified as. Something like that. Um, yeah. But it seems like he's been working really hard the last couple of weeks to put that car into Q3. Like I mentioned, he's done it twice. And he's just thrown it all down the pan in the matter of a couple of corners. It's really undone that stellar qualifying performance he's, he's put together in the last couple of weeks. You can see on the onboard that he's looking in his right-hand mirror as yeah. he's coming onto the track, so he just doesn't see science at all. Yeah, totally his fault. It's a shame. Um, Do you I... think this will affect his chances for next year? His seat chances for next year? Yeah, I, I think that this incident might play a decent part in, in the Italian having, having scuppered his chances, which is a shame. I, I'd When we first started talking about Giovinazzi in F1, I, you know, I think we both said something along the lines of that he's like the most anonymous driver on the grid. It's like the one driver you sort of forget about when you're thinking about who are the, all the drivers. But he has very slowly clawed his way up towards some decent results. And, and his teammate you know, has been Kimi Raikkonen, so... That itself has got to be a reasonable challenge when you're being compared to a world champion, and um, and his qualifying performances especially have improved. And when, like you mentioned, he's been doing really well recently. When you consider the machinery that he's got, mm. you know that's absolutely fantastic what he's been doing. Then you know when when Russell gets into Q3, you know he is rightly fully praised for it. And I think Giovinazzi deserves deserves equal praise considering the machinery that he's working with. Um, yeah, but he's just not quite got that consistency there. Um, he has been unlucky as well, but on this incident, it was it, it was, was his entirely own fault. his fault. <laughs> and I think doing it at the Italian Grand Prix as well, it's uh, that's that's going to play on on the minds of whoever's making that decision. I think, and um, and yeah. also he hits a Ferrari. Like yeah. it couldn't have been a worse set of circumstances at the Italian Grand Prix, and he that's hit right, yeah. a he hits a Ferrari, and I think Carlos got away with it pretty pretty well like Seemed I don't think he had any right, damage yeah. at all or didn't have to box for a fresh set of tyres but yeah pretty bad set of circumstances for Giovinazzi right there who might end up in that seat instead I don't know I think it's there's a lot of and I don't follow Formula 2 too closely so correct me if I'm wrong but from what I hear there's a lot of people there's a lot of names floating around like up to six or seven names floating around which could have that seat mm. um, it's whether they need a do they need a pay driver? Do they need the money? I don't know. They've got Bottas coming in. I really don't know. Do you follow? Do you follow, follow Formula Two at all? Look at the driver transfer market. Are you any more clued up? I I sort of watch the the highlights of the the races occasionally, and I keep a your cursory glance. At it. I don't really don't really follow it that deeply. Mm. I I do know that obviously there's talk of uh, Joe coming in. who has a lot of money with him. Um, but isn't Callum Eilat there? I think he's there, but them? I I do believe that's where the money side of things come into play because he hasn't got the financial backing other drivers mm. do have, but he's arguably got a better CV. <laughs> so it's it's a real it's a real tricky decision. Another and for a lot of these drivers, Schumacher. 
Yes, yes. I did. I think I mentioned that last week, didn't I? When mm. we announced or on the um, on the RPM roundup, I mentioned that that seat could go to, to go to Schumacher, which actually isn't a bad shout. Not only because I mentioned it last week, but after the races, the race has had this week, and another incident between the two drivers, they might Schumacher might just up and leave, or we're quite happily taken off her from somewhere else. But we'll talk yeah, about that later anywhere, on. Anywhere that's not Haas at the moment might, <laughs> yes, be, uh, yeah. might be a bit um, better for him. 